Let me uh, invite Tom O'Korma to come up. We're going to talk about Asterias Biotherapeutics. Uh, for those of you who don't know it, uh, Tom is you know, one of my heroes. He's certainly one of the fathers of stem cell therapy, so goes to show you what a nerd I am. But just so you know, Asterius Biotherapeutics, one of the things that Tom was sharing with me is that Asterius in Latin means starfish. And what does a starfish do? They can regenerate. So Tom, walk us through kind of what's the game plan with Asterius. Help us understand the company, where it's going, the relationship to the old Garon, and the relationship to the new Biotime. Thanks. Thank you, Jason. Hi, everyone. Thanks for sticking with us uh, through the day. So I would like to introduce to you um, and explain what Asterius Biotherapeutics is all about. We are a uh, brand new company. Uh, at this moment, a, a wholly owned subsidiary of Biotime. So I'm trying to advance the slides here. And the mission is really very simple. What we want to do is acquire the best in class of cell therapy assets, develop, uh, operate, and commercialize them. Our focus is on technologies that come from pluripotent cells, ES cells or IPS cells, but we're also looking at possible acquisitions in the uh, autologous and adult stem cell space as well. And our first acquisition is uh, a large one. It is the uh, acquisition of the stem cell assets of Geron Corporation, uh, which I was the CEO of for about 12 years and developed the technology that we're about to bring in. So we have signed a definitive agreement with Geron on the 4th of January of this year, which has not yet closed. We have filed the S-1, which will register all of the shares and warrants that are being used to acquire these technologies, which I'll explain in a moment. And we hope that the deal will close in the June-July timeframe, simply pending the declaration of effectiveness of these uh, various SEC filings. So first, who are the players um, in the asset contribution agreement? Well, at the center is us, Asterius. Uh, upper right is Geron, the stem cell assets. Upper left is Biotime. Lower right is the Geron Corporation shareholders. One of the principles we thought was very important was to try to convey some of the residual value of the Geron stem cell assets and the value that we attribute to developing them to the existing Geron shareholders. And lastly, lower left is a London investment house that has a very large investment in Geron Corporation who I brought in to uh, the mix. So if we take this piece by piece, it's a bit of a complicated uh, game of follow the money. So first, we are acquiring all of the Geron stem cell assets, which I'll describe in a little detail in a moment. The consideration for that is no money up front, no milestone payments, a 4% royalty at the end of the day on commercialized products that rely upon the intellectual property we are acquiring, and some Asterius B shares that we are conveying to Geron, who then immediately after deal closure distributes those share shares in Asterius to the Geron shareholders. The other side of the asset contribution agreement is Biotime. So we are getting stem cell assets from Biotime as well that I'll describe in, in a moment. We are getting cash from uh, Biotime. We are getting registered stock that we can use on our balance sheet from Biotime. And we're getting warrants in Biotime that we will pass through after deal closes to the same Geron shareholders who now own Asterius A shares. So the Geron shareholder winds up and having uh, uh, Biotime shares and shares in Asterius. As consideration to Biotime for that, we give them a lot of shares and warrants in our company, and you'll see the ownership distribution at the end in a moment. The last set of vectors involve the London investor, Romulus Films. So they are providing $5 million in cash directly to Asterius in exchange for shares and warrants in our company. So that at the end of the day, when this actually consummates, we will be owned about 72% by Biotime, 21% by the Geron shareholders, and 7% by the London investor. 
and we expect to be a publicly traded company with about 30 to $40 million of uh, cash or tradable securities in the balance sheet. Um, and we're now dealing with the dance of getting ourselves listed, hopefully on the New York Stock Exchange. Now, next is perhaps the more important uh, discussion. What are the stem cell assets that are being contributed to establish Asterius as a potential leader in this space? Well, first of all, uh, all of the Geron intellectual property portfolio, and this is arguably the most advanced and complete intellectual property portfolio in the embryonic stem cell space on the planet. There are over 450 patents and patent applications uh, that we developed over the 12 years of Geron's work. It includes composition of matter patents on ES-derived cardiomyocytes, ES-derived uh, chondrocytes, and we are the only company that actually has composition of matter on some of these ES-derived cells. You can't treat patients with patents, so in addition, we're getting all of the biological materials, all of the reagents that were used to manufacture the cells, the master and working cell banks themselves, the actual GMP-approved developed products that were used, for example, in the world's first spinal cord injury trial uh, that Geron uh, uh, terminated two years ago. So actual, real, ready-to-dose products. We're getting laboratory equipment, so they, we're actually moving back into the old Geron stem cell facility in Menlo Park. And the labs in the GMP facility are now about two-thirds, three-quarters of the way through in getting them up and running and ready to function. Clinical service contracts, the folks who actually implemented the clinical trials, all the lab notebooks and all of the notes of how we did all of this, um, all of the regulatory filings, including two active INDs, one for OPC1, the um, spinal cord injury cell, and one for VAC1, which is an autologous um, uh, cellular vaccine using dendritic cells that are harvested uh, from patients. So again, our focus is not exclusively on pluripotent cells. We're also getting the out licenses that are royalty bearing to us, particularly the one to GE Healthcare that you heard about this morning. Those were Geron's cardiomyocytes that uh, were shown on the slide this morning. Uh, and we hope to um, aid and Im improve the penetration of that technology to the marketplace. Uh, we have out licenses to uh, life technologies and stem cell uh, technologies as well. And lastly, an exclusive sublicense to the two telomerase as antigen for our two products that use telomerase as antigen in the cancer vaccine space. So in sum, it's the full gamut of what we developed at Geron. From Biotime, we're getting a lot of very important and interesting assets. Some ownership in two of their subsidiaries. One of them is Orthocyte, their orthopedic focused uh, subsidiary, and another one is Cell Cure, which is in Israel, that focuses on retinal diseases and neurologic diseases. Importantly, we're getting uh, use of their GMP ES lines. These are embryonic stem cell lines that were derived in Singapore, not only under GMP, which is unusual, but from donors whose entire health histories are quantified and recorded. So these are the only ES lines we know of on the planet with a full provenance of healthcare dossiers of the donors and complete GMP derivation and culturing th throughout their lifespan. This is really important because there is some conversation at the FDA about whether products that are derived from the Wisconsin lines will ever be granted full BLA approval because of the absence of that health history of the donors. We also get some access to patents that enable us to use um, these assets. So on the day we close, we will have uh, the full complement of the old Geron product portfolio, as well as some very interesting opportunities for integration with Biotime. And so the first and point I want to make on this slide, which is my last, and perhaps the most important takeaway message, is that it would be wrong to assume that this is a Geron II. Some of these programs will be backburnered. Some of them will be partnered. Some of them will have different indications. So for example, OPC1, arguably our most advanced product, we finished five patients 
in the world's first spinal cord injury trial. All of them have done very well. Um, and our trial sites are very interested in our restarting that spinal cord trial, hopefully advancing from thoracics, which was what we accomplished, into the cervicals, which you've heard multiple times today. We may or may not do that. We have interesting data in a monkey model of MS spine, which might have a more direct approval route where the uh, even lower dose of these uh, glial progenitors remyelinates the spinal cord lesion in a primate model of multiple sclerosis. We are clearly going forward f with stroke with the collaboration at UCLA. The biotime technology that we find extremely useful, which I think fairly is quite undervalued, includes these so-called progenitor lines. These are cells that are derived from ES cells, allowed to spontaneously differentiate, and then they're captured. And while they're not telomerase positive, they're not immortal, they do have long telomeres, and they have a very robust proliferative capacity. And what's nice about these cells is they only make one kind of tissue. And in this case, the osteochondral progenitors, and there are about half a dozen of them, will only make a particular kind of cartilage or a particular kind of bone, which is a very attractive purity manufacturing scale-up feature. Now, to exemplify what we're going to be doing, these cells were only made at the research level. They're made in microtiter wells. They're not GMP. So one of the first things we're contemplating doing is taking the Singapore lines and rederiving the chondrogenic progenitors under GMP to give us a very unique product that might actually focus us on the orthopedic model. We like the hydrogel technologies, which are uh, derived from the University of Utah. And this is a solution that you can mix with the cells, and as you're injecting them into the organ, you inject a crosslinker. And depending on the concentration of the crosslinker, the gel can become very soft, like jello, and be resorbed in a matter of weeks or a month. Or it can be very hard and, and rigid, with real tensile strength, like what you might want for a disc repair. And it's totally controllable. Well, one of the biggest problems that those of us have who are injecting cells into tissues is retention of the injected cell in the tissue. So when you're injecting cells into a stroke cavity, there's no way for the cells to engraft and stay there. Injecting them in a gel will solve that problem. When we inject cardiomyocytes into a beating heart, there's turgor pressure inside the wall of the ventricle that spits some of those cells back out. We can solve that problem with the hydrogel. This is our first, but it won't be our last, acquisition. We are in conversations with a couple of other very exciting uh, technologies, also based on pluripotent cells. And if we were able to consummate those deals, one of these may become our lead product. And it's not on this list. So again, our first acquisition was to establish a powerhouse of intellectual property and some clinic-ready technologies, the VAC-1 and the OPC. The way in which we format and develop these technologies is still under discussion. Uh, we will come out and let people know what our operational plans are shortly after the deal closes and once we uh, either consummate or not the other uh, potential acquisitions, that will all get rolled up into a development plan that I'll be happy to share with you early fall. Thanks.